Hello, and welcome to Fast and Nature's 10 minute field guide series. In this video, we present to you one of nature's fascinating creatures in just about 10 minutes. Today, we will be discussing the ring neck snake. Ringneck snakes are found often by flipping rocks or logs, and uh, they're found basically anywhere you can go. There are distributions from Nova Scotia, west to Minnesota, and down through the Midwest to Florida, at least with the ringnecks I'm going to be talking about. The ones you're going to see me holding here are northern ringnecks. Um, I also have southern ringnecks and intergrades. Well, I have intergrades in the Pine Barrens. Locally, I'm in southeast Pennsylvania area. Uh, but they go down to Florida. And there are other subspecies spread across the U.S. and Canada. The northern ringnecks here are Diadophus punctatus edzwardsi. Um, I like to look at the way... Uh, names come about and dia means divided throughout ophis is greek for snake and punctus is spotted and i'm wondering if punctus uh the spotted part comes from the belly of more southern ringnecks they have a spotted belly which i'll show you later when we um, get to some pictures so diadophus punctatus edwardsi or what i'm flipping here and diadophus punctatus punctatus are the southerns which you would get down further into Florida. This is a guy I flipped yesterday. You can see why they have the name ring, ring neck. Uh, the rings can be orange sometimes, most of the time they're yellow just like the belly uh, but they can be an orangey color and you can see there it has like kind of a black outline that's not always prevalent but, you know, one of the things you want to look for is they are a slender bodied snake. Uh, the adults are more grayish like that, very iridescent in the sun. Uh, they can be blackish. I, I find that with the uh, immature or juvenile snakes, they're a little bit darker. And then they have the yellow body. They're about 10 to 16 inches long. Um, the adults, or the largest adults I've ever seen, maybe 20. 22 inches I believe somebody uh, the record is probably like 25 26 inches don't quote me on that you probably if you find something that big then that'd be pretty amazing um, and I apologize here for the for the uh, camera work I promise to get better at this, this is my first video but, um, yeah the, the confusing species you can't really confuse these with too much. There's not, there's not any other snake that has a ring around its neck within its range. Um, I guess immature or juvenile, I'm sorry, I keep saying immature. That's a uh, burning term. Uh, juvenile brown snakes or red bellies could be confused as they kind of have like a lighter neck area. The, and the, um, the red bellies kind of have like some dots on them. But I mean, the, the difference here is that ringnecks are smooth scaled, whereas brown snakes and red bellies are from Steraria genus and they have keeled scales. Um, I just thought that was a nice view. So here's, a, here's an example of a southern ringneck, Diadophus punctatus punctatus. They have the broken rings, whereas the northerns have the full rings around their neck. And I'm going to show you in a second that these belly dots or half moons, these are uh, typical of your southern ringnecks, and I'm thinking that's where the punctatus came from. Here's a Florida individual that I actually found on the crawl midday while I was walking around my hotel in Disney World. Um, I love that red coloration there. Most of these, like I said, are found under cover objects though. Uh, this guy was actually up in this wall. So here I am putting him back, but 
uh, some of this plaster has fallen off this wall here and you can flip snakes under the plaster, you can flip them under the crumbling foundation or logs. Uh, th that's mainly how you're going to find these guys. So, what do they eat? Um, their main source of food are salamanders, at least locally. They love the Plethodon genus, especially redback salamanders, um, which are super abundant here. Uh, they have been found to eat two lined salamanders. They do like salamander eggs as well. One uh, ringneck stomach contents found a redback salamander and 17 of its eggs that was probably guarding when the ringneck found it. They also eat your earthworms, slugs, uh, insect larvae. They can even eat smaller snakes, frogs, and lizards if, if they're small enough. And they don't normally constrict. They're not a constrictor. They usually hold it in their mouth until the prey stops moving. Um, they do this because they actually are a rear fanged snake. They have larger rear teeth and they are mildly toxic. Uh, we will never figure that out because they are harmless to us. Uh, it's basically impossible to get them to bite you. Uh, there are a few accounts of people who have been bitten by them and they describe a slight burning sensation. And I'm kind of calling BS on that because I've probably dealt with literally over a thousand ringnecks and have never had one try to bite me. So I'm probably thinking that somebody's forcing them to bite them. But yeah, they are harmless to humans. Um, they're not harmless to redbacks. So here's one I flipped with a small garter snake. Uh, I'll do a video on them eventually. But you also find, you all, almost, or I shouldn't say almost all the time, but a lot of times you do find these sharing cover objects with multiple animals. I had a picture earlier of a bunch of them sharing a cover object. You, I flipped 13 ringnecks under one rock at one time. In the Midwest, it gets a little crazy, but over here, not so much. Watch this guy get in the way. So their, um, their reproduction takes place in mainly spring, sometimes fall, and the females lay anywhere from two up to 10 eggs. Uh, they sometimes lay their eggs communally and then they hatch in late August, early September. That's really environmentally, um, it depends on where they're at, how long it takes the eggs to hatch, when they've actually bred, that's the sort of thing. Uh, females reach sexual maturity in two to three years, usually around eight-ish inches, I guess. I'm sorry, I must apologize again on my, uh, my camera work, pretty, subpar here. I guess I should touch on the habitat. They're found in moist areas and deciduous and coniferous woodlands under anything. If you have any questions or if there's an animal you would like to see profiled, leave a comment. Now please take a second to hit the like button and help us bring fascinating nature into more people's homes. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on more reptiles, amphibians, birds, and more. Thanks for watching. Now hypnotize yourself with the natural world and step into the outdoors. It'd be a mistake not to talk about their best defense mechanism, which is musk. They are the smelliest snakes I have come across. My theory is that because they're so small and because they are inoffensive and don't bite and don't have the venom that pit vipers have, they have to stink really bad to say to a predator, look man, you do not want to eat me. I smell this bad, I'm going to taste worse. Get the hell away. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're going to catch ringnecks, you're gonna take a good six to 12 washings of your hands before it's gone.